is offered for the people of the parish. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You are the Holy One, you are the Lord, you are the Most High, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord. Answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah, came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for our song is, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ. For the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh, they are Israelites, theirs, the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, 
and the provinces. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to song is, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for his word. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory Glory to you. Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter, and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down, those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Last week in the Gospel, God showed himself to three of the apostles as he looks in heaven. He was changed in appearance, the transfiguration. That was last Sunday. This Sunday, he shows himself to all the apostles, not changed as he is in heaven, but he gives them a lesson that he, as God, even though he looks like a person in Jesus, that he, as God, is Lord of all creation. That he doesn't stop being God for the years that he was walking in this world. He still is God and he still has power over all creation and he shows this by the miracle of walking on the water. And he was saying to them the laws of nature that guide you the law of nature that says you can't walk on water. That doesn't apply to me. I am God. Believe that I am God. Trust that I am God. And Peter picks up on this and he says to him, if you call me, I'll walk on water with you. And our Lord says, come, walk with me. And Peter climbs out of the boat, and it seems that for a few steps, Peter actually was walking on water toward our Lord. But then the storm, the wind, the waves, he became frightened by them, and he began to sink. 
And our Lord says to him, why didn't you believe in me? Why didn't you trust me? He could have gone on and said, you just saw me defy all the laws of nature. You just saw me prove to you that I, as God, am not bound by the things that happen in this world. You just saw that. Why didn't you believe in me? And the answer to that question, we could ask ourselves that question. It's a great question. Why don't I believe that God can do things for me? Why do I spend so much time worrying about things? Why do I spend so much time trying to get advice from other people? Why do I spend so many sleepless nights? Why don't I believe that God can save me? That trust that was lacking in Peter, it's lacking at us too. Why? I'll give you an image because there's an image in this gospel that's very powerful, very powerful image. It's a picture really worth a million words of what we're supposed to be with God in our relationship. And the image I wanna give you is a child learning to cross a street. It's an image from my childhood in Brooklyn. Kids here don't have to cross streets. Uh, they get in a car everywhere that they're going. They don't have to cross streets. And if they do, you press the button and the light changes. When I grew up in Brooklyn, there were no buttons to press and there were very few lights on the corners. And where I grew up, they were like right in a row. There were three rows and they were main arteries to the Williamsburg Bridge and they were heavy traffic because all commercial vehicles were on those streets because the Williamsburg Bridge doesn't have a toll. There was always heavy traffic. And you, as a kid, you were taught by steps how to maneuver across that busy street. And the first 101 crossing busy intersections was you're with an older sibling, you're with a parent, you're with a relative, they take you by the hand and say, don't let go of my hand. Don't let go. Hold on to my hand. I will get you across the street. And you picked up the pace of the person who was walking. And I can remember, even though you're holding someone's hand, it's kind of scary because now you're in the middle of the street and those big semi-trailers that were roaring by in the middle, now they're so close, you can smell the, the wind that they make when they pass you by. Don't let go of my hand. Don't pull away from me. If you pull away, it's gonna really be dangerous. I know what I'm doing, hold on to my hand. Yet, as a kid, you experience the fear and you want to pull back. Why do we do that? Um, why do we let the things that are going on around us scare us? I think it has a lot to do with control. Uh, a little child, a really little child, isn't looking to take control yet. They're trusting. They let the, themselves be guided by the parent. They hold tight to the parent's hand. Once we begin trying to exercise control of the world around us, we don't like to be guided. We want to know that we are maneuvering ourselves. We want to be in charge of our emotions, our actions, and if we're afraid, we want to stop and we want to understand we need 
to be in control. So we pull our hands away. The child, learning to be in control, pulls away. No, I want to do this, but I can't do this. And something tells me this is much bigger than I, and I really can't do this, but I don't want to be in a situation where someone else is going to control me, and someone else is going to tell me what to do, and then I have to do it. So, like Peter, I pulled away from what our Lord was trying to guide me to. And then our Lord uses a very beautiful image worth a million words. Peter begins to sink. Our Lord could have said or thought in his head, Peter back in the boat, and Peter would have been back in the boat. But our Lord did something. He did something physical that gives us a wonderful image when we pray. He reached out his hand and he grabbed Peter's hand. It's a beautiful image because what do you do when someone is afraid, when someone is scared, when someone is confused? It's a natural thing. You touch the person's hand. Don't be afraid. You hold a child's hand. Don't be afraid. This image, and I'm sure Peter felt that, because he was sinking, and I'm sure he felt the strength in Christ's hand pulling him up out of the water into which he was sinking. And God left us with this wonderful image. I will take you by the hand. I've shown you I'm God. I'm the Lord of all creation. I am not bound by the physical laws of this world, the dangers of this world I can take care of and maneuver. I will take you by the hand and bring you safely to the other side. Don't fight me on this. Don't pull away as if you can take care of it yourself. Don't pull away as if you have the resources and the knowledge. You have to have this basic trust in me that you take my hand and allow me to be God and allow me to guide you safely through whatever storms, whatever dangers, whatever scary situations come along in your life. We keep this image in our heads. God, take my hand. Hold my hand tight and don't let me pull away from you. And just to kind of give you more of a depth to that image, Google something when you go home. Google the Negro spiritual, precious Lord, take my hand. That song comes from the depths of faith. It's American, it's ours, it's part of our cultural heritage. It's like 200 years old. But I like to think it's based on this. Take my hand. Uh, if you Google it, precious Lord, take my hand, They'll even give you a little uh, YouTube of Mahalia Jackson singing the song. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Help me to stand. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm alone. There's a storm and there's night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand. Precious Lord, take my hand. When the way grows drear, dreary, too much, precious Lord, linger near me. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand, lest I fall. 
precious Lord, take my hand. The image of the strength of God's hand. The image of the strength of the parent holding the child's hand. God wanted us to understand that image. He wanted us to know, this is what I do. This is what I can do. How many more ways can I prove to you that I am capable of doing this? Reach out. I will take your hand. You will feel my strength. I will get you safely through it. Just don't pull away from me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the creed and believe in one God. Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now, forever, for ages, unto endless ages. Amen. Amen. The response to each petition will be, Lord, have mercy. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, religious, and all faithful servants of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our president may be God-fearing, our elected officials blessed with wisdom, and that God will watch over and protect our service men and women throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of our whole world, for the peace and well-being of our holy Roman Catholic Church, and for the union of all churches, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those suffering from the devastating effects of natural disasters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the sick of our parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For deceased family and friends, and all the souls enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Oh God, help, save, pity, protect us who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring Saint Gennaro, all the saints, we commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives, to Christ our God, to thee be glory for ages unto endless ages. Amen. Amen. Reminder, this Tuesday, August 15th, is the feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother. It is a holy day of obligation with the same obligation as Sunday. Please consult the bulletin for the schedule of Masses. In observance, the parish center will be closed. Pre-sale of the ride tickets and 50-50 raffle for the San Gennaro Feast will be available after all the weekend Masses and at the parish center during the week. If you would like to sign up to volunteer at the feast, please see them as well. The White Elephant Tag Sale is having a 50% off sale. 
Accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. So with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Without end, we acclaim. Make holy 
Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember brothers and sisters fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ <clears throat> through him with him in him god almighty father in unity of the holy spirit all glory all honor is yours forever and ever amen at the savior's command Formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for Graciously grant peace 
in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Yes.
with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks.